Hello folks, how are you? Amazing. It's a fantastic event and really big one. Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting. So you are in India for the first time or you have been around? First time. Oh, I hope you're enjoying this one. I that am. is nice. It is nice and it already feels like it was a too short of a visit. Uh, so I have a couple of questions that I have prepared for you. So I'll be firing them one by one to you. Feel free to pick whichever you want to pick. You want to pick it or you want to pick it. But first, let's introduce a brief introduction about what you do, how your day life looks like at Google or something. You go ahead first. Hi. Okay, thank you. So I'm Hen Goldberg and I'm a general manager and VP engineering. Uh, for everything containers. So I'm responsible for Kubernetes and the serverless portfolio within Google Cloud. Nice. And my name is Subram Natarajan. I lead the customer engineering for Google Cloud India. I'm the director for that. And as part of my uh, responsibility, I help customers realize the best value of the cloud in providing solutions, etc. So two of my favorite topic on the Google Cloud as well as containerization, mm -hmm. which is, I think, future of the development, production, everything that's going to happen in the cloud, in the container. So really, yeah, thank you so much for being here. So a couple of questions I have. What is the biggest advantage for any startup to be in the Google Cloud? So, you know, when I talk with uh, startups, uh, the number one thing they would like to optimize for is their velocity. How quickly they can move, how quickly they can get that product market fit. And with our technology, you know, we, in a second we'll talk more hopefully on our containerized platform, which is our Cloud Run and GKE. That's really where we shine because we take care of everything uh, below the application. So I think that's like the number one value for startups today. And I see that's why they choose us. It's simply the easiest way to innovate. Oh, nice. The speed. Yes. Every startup loves speed and yeah. that's what you provide. A really good one. Another question I'll fire up is... How can a startup figure out that they are GKE ready? Because that's the question I get a lot. Should we do GKE? Should we not? What's your thought on this one? So maybe for folks that they don't know, GKE is Google Kubernetes Engine. It's uh, probably, I can say, like the best managed Kubernetes today in the industry. Uh, I would challenge it and maybe flip it. I think people should answer like why they are not ready. You know, if today you'll take your day-to-day -day life, your music streaming, you're watching TV, you're going to the bank, you're driving your car, you're ordering food, um, you're shopping online, most likely all of those services in some place or another are powered already by Kubernetes uh, and GKE. Um, where I do think that you know, people can uh, also start is actually with our serverless solution. And then if they think that they um, are looking for maybe more open source based or maybe looking for more environments, then they should be going to GKE. Oh, nice. I'll come back on to your favorite topic, serverless, in a minute. But first, I would like to have another question which I have. My favorite topic of this, I am biased on this, and we discussed all this already, IDX. Oh. I really love that product. Probably I'm too much of a fan moment for this one. But I think it, it is the way how Indian developers will become much more of a mobile developer in future just because of IDX. In India, there is a problem of not everybody can afford higher laptops and you need simulation in iOS and in Android. And what I see with the IDX is a click of a button and you become a mobile developer. So I just want to know your thoughts. Of what do you think about IDX? Yeah, uh, you probably would have caught the announcement that we made in the morning, how IDX is now beta and uh, how it is integrated into, into Chrome so seamlessly. See, first of all, I think as a development engine or development platform, it provides pretty much anything that you can think of in terms of code development, ordering, as well as compiling the entire life cycle of how. And it, the look and feel and the speed with which you can kind of go in and out with respect to uh, doing, working on a code, developing it, uh, uh, you know, validating it, etc. Uh, is just so, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. I, I can't, you know, I, 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 saw, it, I saw it in the morning. Uh, uh, I've been using it for a while. Uh, when the announcement was made that it is beta, so I was also jumping with joy, saying, "Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to start announcing this to my friends and family as well." So this is such a neat tool, uh, quick, quick way to really get to become a developer if you are not. Yeah, no hardware requirement, nothing. The browser spins it up, and oh man, you're good to go to code. That that is what I really want. Okay, uh, coming on to uh, one of your area of expertise uh, mm -hmm. on the serverless. Serverless is something which I have been recommending to a lot of companies during the consultancy and all of that. It's the way to go, but you have to be very cautious in that. Serverless, you can scale up anything. 
and you don't have to worry on that. And you don't pay extra because if you are not consuming. Exactly. But with that, there are lots of online stories about serverless can save you millions of dollars, can also burn billion, millions of dollars. Uh, what advice would you give when somebody is just getting started with serverless so that they are paying only what they are using and they are careful about it more of that. So your thoughts on how serverless should be used? So actually, you know, from my perspective, serverless, usually what you see is that it's actually a more cost effective way because as you said, like you pay as much as you use. If you don't use, you don't pay. And with Cloud Run, you actually scale to zero. So there is like zero instances even available. Okay, if, so if you don't have traffic, you're not paying anything. And so maybe I will flip it and think about it differently. If you're paying more, you're probably very successful. <laughs> and that's usually a good thing. And, and maybe, you know, you can put some guardrails, but I actually have never heard about a customer complaining, hey, my business is going super well. I got this product market fit, huge traffic. And then what do I do? So I think those are like uh, rich people problems. <laughs> a good problem to have. Very much. All right. So a great conversation around. And I would also add a couple of bits on the serverless. Uh, serverless needs to be taken up very carefully. It's de facto. It should be de facto eventually in the future. But configure it properly. Don't cut the slacks there. Do enough research. Hire good engineers who know what they are doing. And that way, I think that is the most optimized way to build a startup these days. Uh, all the stories that you read around and all of that, there are misconfigurations and you need to be a security expert and aware at least about all of that. But again, uh, great interacting with you, great conversation here. Thank you so much for coming on to this. It was lovely meeting you. Same Thanks here. Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much.